Aloha, everybody, and guess where we are? We're inside Pager 8 and the Lava Channel. Decided to hike down in here. Um, wanted to get some photographs, do a little bit of uh, amateur scientific studies and observations. And it is spectacular. I mean, absolutely, completely, and utterly spectacular, as you can see from these images. It's actually, I can only say, I imagine this is what Mars would be like. I mean, just look. This is the actual spillway of Fissure 8, the opening in the horseshoe. And uh, we'll come over here and we'll show you this side, which is where I'm standing next to. And I have to be very careful and keep an eye out because uh, potentially following rocks. And as you can see, oh, here's a little interesting feature. Let me zoom in. It's right up there. It's that little spot of light coming through the, the rocks. It's like a little arch of lava across that little gap. That is amazing. So I just wanted to do a quick little video and show y'all what, well, show you what it's like down here. The hike in is treacherous. I do not recommend anyone else coming down in here. Um, if you have absolutely no experience or even very little experience walking on lava like this, it is very dangerous, very unsafe, uh, though it is absolutely amazing. So what we're looking at right over here is if you remember when Fissure 8 was erupting, the lava was coming out and it had this little indention onto the right of the spillway where it was kind of buffering and puddling back. That is what that is over there. And then this is the main channel that ultimately flowed out towards the left and towards the big pillar of rock that uh, we filmed in the previous video. And of course, on the way back, there's a lot of things that we didn't see on the way in simply because they were behind us. And here's an example of such a thing. What we're looking at here is literally a lava splatter. At some point, um, I would think it would be from the end of the eruption where it was just percolating a little bit. And it is just spectacular. And I want to show you that it's not just sitting on top. I can't remove it. It is fused and stuck. Well, it's a little loose, but uh, yeah, it's just, just really just stuck on there. Amazing. And just as I was getting ready to walk away, I spotted something else. And it is, of course, life. Already inside Fissure 8. Right there, there's your proof. And there's another, another bit right there. These ferns are one of the first things that come back on lava flows. They apparently can grow anywhere they want. If you would like to help support or continue to support the channel, please check out my online stores for some awesome stuff. There are various items embellished with my photography available. Some examples would include t-shirts, phone cases, tote bags, and more. If you are enjoying this content, please consider clicking that thumbs up button to let me know. If you would like to receive notifications for future videos, then you will need to click that subscribe button and bell icon. Mahalo for your support. On the way back, we're going to, of course, go through a lava tube. And this lava tube was formed, as you can see it's awful dark in there, was formed during the eruption of Fissure 8. I actually did a video showing uh, the formation of it. Um, I will try to link that in the description or up in the top right hand corner at the end of the video or somewhere so people can go watch that if you would like. 
However, from what I understand, UG, or USGS doesn't even know about this particular feature. So, based on that information, the fact that I watched it for him, I reported on it for me, and I am down here in it, I am going to use this video to officially claim this tube, symbolically of course, and we're going to name it the Charles Lava Tube. So everybody, welcome to Charles's Lava Tube. So I don't know what the actual uh, process of registering such a, a, a claim or a name is, but we will be contacting the USGS over that and see what exactly has to be done or needs to be done or can be done or even if it if they will do it but so officially i say it's charles's lava tube unofficially it is absolutely charles's lava tube it's not very big i'd say it's what maybe two three hundred feet long something like that and uh got a little bit of flashlight in here but it's still kind of dark we actually got a little skylight up there i took some pictures so i will be probably overlaying them in the video here and there I don't know so this is basically a um, just an experimental video I'm not sure how I'm gonna edit it but we're gonna keep moving forward while I try to record but it is a little difficult to do so because I have a walking stick in one hand the camera in the other so I'm having to rely on Scott for lighting But I definitely wanted to bring y'all down in, in here because this is just, I mean, amazing. It is absolutely spectacular. And as you can hear by all the rocks shifting under our feet, it literally sounds like we're walking on ceramic plates in here. And you think, okay, a lot of that's from the echo, but there's no echo. So, I'll still from that. So listen, echo. No echo. So it is literally the rocks under our feet making all that noise and of course this little feature right here is a rock a huge rock and from the formation of it it looks like it was on the ceiling at one point because of these drips and everything right through here and it came from that way somewhere don't really know where but it's just rolled Let's take a look at this side yeah, yeah, it definitely broke off from somewhere. I know this is probably a little hard for y'all to see, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. And of course, here's the exit. Look at the shape of that. I mean, it's a perfect crescent, crescent arch. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And of course, here on the ground, we've got some type of mineral uh, precipitating out of the rock. And it's white, but there's some yellow in there. So I'm not sure if that's going to be uh, some form of sulfate, maybe? Um, I know sulfur is yellow, so there is some sulfur right, right in there. But, so I don't know if it's a sulfur compound that's precipitating or maybe a phosphorus. Um, I really don't know. Uh, I'm, that's another question I'm going to have to ask the USGS, I guess. Oh, look at this over here. Look at that there. It's just layered like like paper, like newspapers going down the conveyor belt. It's just amazing. And there's so many sparkly stuff. I mean, it's just sparkly everywhere, which I'm sure the camera's probably not capturing any of that. But it, uh, I just, I'm blown away. I, I'm an awestruck. And there is some water dripping in here. And of course, let's point this stuff out over here. Just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Just, I just, sulfur. And whatever the white is, it's just, and of course we've got water dripping all down over there. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute and let you listen to the water drip.
It's almost musical. Okay, and this is the uh, second chamber, because there's like two chambers. If we look back here behind us, we see this, of course, this, this is the larger of the two chambers. And it's, I know it's a little hard to see on the camera. And then it narrows right here where I'm standing, over this little arch right here. And then opens up into the second little chamber area which is about, oh, I say half the size of the one behind us. And of course, we're coming out towards the end. So this actually would be the exit where I started this clip was the opening where the lava actually poured into the tube. And this is the exit where it came out of the tube and rejoined the main lava channel from Fissure 8. And surprisingly, the ground through here is more stable and solid than anywhere else outside. But this lava actually was moving very slowly, if I remember. Well, I do remember in, in when I was watching or when I was making the video, I noticed that what was coming through here was moving very slow compared to what was outside. So that would, of course, make it more solid. But there are still voids. Again, very dangerous. So if you're not experienced, this is not a place to be. Look at that beautiful blue sky out there. I could just stay in here forever. And of course we have this formation here, which is a little difficult to see, but it's just a slab that came out of the side here, which is why this place is dangerous. As you can see right here, that's where this, this rock came from that hole. It's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. Just amazingly beautiful. I know I keep using that word amazing, but it is, it's just amazing. All of it's amazing, 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 amazing. I just can't say it enough. So I need to get out of the source and find some new words. Okay, while taking a break in Charles's lava tube, uh, I looked over to my left, and what did I see? I saw steam coming up out of the ground. So there is definitely still heat underneath here. Though, the ambient temperature is very cool. I'd say, what, maybe 78 degrees in here? It's actually very, very comfortable. Try to move a little closer, but uh, trying to give y'all a good view of the steam, but lighting is, there we go, look at that. So I've put my hand down in there and it's steamy hot, but not like scalding hot. It doesn't want to burn you. So I'm going to say that the heat is probably way down there and the steam's having to travel pretty high up or uh, travel a pretty good distance. And of course it's cooling on the way. However, I am noticing that the amount of steam is decreasing. So it, I would logically assume that it's one of those things where these drips of water, we've got a water drip that falls right there. I doubt you can see it on camera, but see the dark spot in the white? That's where the, that's the wet spot, that's where the water's dripping. So as the water accumulates and drips down through the cracks, hits the hot spot, it comes back up at steam. So. I think there's a timing cycle on it. You know, it takes time for the water to get down there, steam, turn to steam, come back up. So it, it's ebbing and flowing, I guess would be an appropriate terminology for it. I don't know. Just amazing. Well, that'll do it for this particular adventure here on Doing Hawaii. I appreciate you watching. And if you enjoyed this content, please remember to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want notifications, you got to click that subscribe and bell icon, of course. So everybody, y'all have a extraordinary 
morning, afternoon, or evening.